They call him the White Wolf. He's an albino, doomed with a conscience in a morally gray world. Relying on alchemy for strength, and dabbling in magic, he's Elric of Melnibane. In the current year, fantasy really has become mainstream. Everyone and their grandma has seen Game of Thrones. If you haven't seen Lord of the Rings yet, well, watch it. This is a threat. But there's one IP that hasn't been totally exploited by our corporate overlords, and that's probably for the best. But despite all the references I make, no one gets them. So I'm making this video with a vengeance. Y'all know from the intro that I'll be talking about the lore of Elric. Now, this character was a brainchild of the author Michael Moorcock. Unfortunate last name. And he made his debut in the 1961 short story, The Dreaming City. Since then, Elric has appeared in a multitude of other short stories, novels, comic books, and other nerdy media. While he hasn't risen to the normie level of relevance, he has made an undeniable impact on fantasy culture at large. Before we can get into what he has influenced, and before we can talk about the character himself, we must first dive into the setting Elric of Melibene calls home. Melibene. The Empire of Melibene, also known as the Bright Empire, was once the greatest nation in the world of the Young Kingdoms. After ruling the world for 10,000 years through sorcery and enslavement, the decadent inheritors of this empire looked inward instead of outward. So, the Young Kingdoms of the Young Kingdoms rose in its wake, but still hated the elusive, inhuman Melibeneans. Now what makes these Melibeneans inhuman, you ask? Good question. Well, they have tapering ears, but they're not elves, I swear. They're also descended from dragons, but that's a different story. What really separates Melibeneans from humans is that they don't have a conscience. And in comes Elric. He's different than his kin. He has, well, first of all, white skin and white hair, red eyes, but also some semblance of a conscience. And as Emperor of Melibene, he hopes to use morality to reinvigorate his dying empire. Now, this is to the ire of his fellow nobles, who would rather just pursue hedonistic pleasures. In addition to his lack of melanin, Elric also has a health condition that renders him dangerously weak unless he drinks the proper potions to survive. Same. This all changes, however, when he acquires the Black Rune Sword, Stormbringer. This fell sword seems to be the answer to Elric's health problems, for as it drinks the souls of those it slices down, it feeds the albino emperor vigor and strength that pushes him not to just normal human levels, but something beyond his normal potential. Drinking souls may seem like fun and games and all, but it comes at a cost, and not just the souls that are permanently destroyed. Stormbringer is actually a demon in sword form, and this sentience is often at odds with Elric, who, during battle, is forced to slice down not only his foes, but people he cares for as well, in serving that demonic thing within his blade. This is what makes Elric not just an anti-hero, but an intriguing character as well. His symbiotic relationship with his sword is a necessary one, as the souls of his enemies keep him alive. But at the same time, this vampiric habit makes him a monster. Now the tales Elric takes part in are ones of high fantasy. And I mean high fantasy. Michael Moorcock is many things as an author, but unoriginal is not one of them. While the tropes of medieval fantasy are present in his works, there are also wild original ideas in them as well. These ideas include, but are not limited to, entire cities who are just comprised of beggars, transdimensional sorcerers who must embody themselves as towers in the material plane, and the idea of the eternal champion. Moorcock was really one of the first to explore the ideas of the multiverse, and instead of this being out of creative bankruptcy, it was a way to take all of his different settings and have them exist in a single continuity. Throughout all these different worlds, there's a single character known as the Eternal Champion, who is incarnated as the different protagonists in Moorcock's works. And sometimes, there are even crossover episodes where all these incarnations work together to take on an Avengers-level threat. Now, we can't talk about Elric on the internet without bringing up the Witcher controversy. And Sapkowski's Geralt of Rivia shares quite a few uncanny similarities with Elric. These include, but are not limited to, having weird colored eyes, being accomplished swordsmen, having multitudes of romantic partners, being anti-heroes, using both magic and potions, having a conscience contrary to most of their kind, and adventuring in a morally gray world. Moorcock's Elric was around for over three decades before the first Witcher story came out, so some inspiration could have been taken. Now, is Sapkowski guilty of plagiarism? 
Well, Borkak never filed a formal lawsuit, but he is definitely salty about the situation. There's a definite similarity between the two albinos, but their stories are markedly different. Where Elric's world is one of high, crazy fantasy, the world of The Witcher is much more grounded and less epic in scope. Geralt also doesn't have a vampiric weapon he relies on, where Stormbringer is central to Elric's character. So is Sapkowski guilty? Well, not totally. That being said, he is a little sus. If you like the sound of Elric, be sure to check out the Elric Saga by Michael Moorcock. I'll be diving into this book series on the channel in the near future, and I'll be seeing whether it held up against the test of time. Otherwise, if you think I got anything wrong about Elric, let me know how wrong I am in the comments below. Also, I myself am something of a fantasy author. I took some inspiration from Elric when making the villain for this story, but don't worry, it's way less than Sapkowski did with The Witcher, so no issues with plagiarism in this one. Um, but if you like dark, brutal fantasy, you're sure to love this. Uh, links to the paperback and Kindle copies in the description below. Otherwise, you know the drill. Like, subscribe, and take care. Away with you, vile beggar!